What's up? Welcome to Blockchain Tech and Finance News. If you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications right up there onto Kinto uh, Kintoshi on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Kintoshi. We're also streaming this to DLive, Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube as well, as well as uh, Trovo <clears throat> in the Just Chatting and News section. I have a few different articles today. I'll be doing this every Monday. Possibly I'll be doing this multiple times a week. Um, so I have a few different articles uh, I'm going to be going through today. So let's go right on into it. All right, first piece of news I have on the map here is from the markets. Uh, cryptocurrency and uh, Bitcoin eyes U.S. inflation report and the potential dollar liquidity squeeze. So Bitcoin's mid-May crash happened after U.S. Uh, reported inflation at three-year highs. This article is from Amkar Godbol. And again, I'll be having all these articles in the recaps on YouTube. And I'll have all the uh, links in the description for those. So let's just go through this. Uh, Bitcoin's immediate bullish trajectory has weakened following the last week's double digit price drop. The cryptocurrency's near term prospects hinge on <clears throat> Tuesday's US inflation report. The leading cryptocurrency by market value is trading 3% lower on the day at 44,500, having dropped 11% last week. That was the biggest single week percentage decline since May. According to the Coinbase Institutional, Coinbase immediate, immediate bullish outlook has weakened, courtesy of Weeks of last week's slide in the cryptocurrency could consolidate between 44,000 and 48,000 for the time being. Some charts, uh, some chart experts fear a deeper drop as the price structure uh, structure now looks similar to the one observed after Bitcoin's double digit slide in the second half of April. So I've got some charting analytics here. As extended sell off could materialize if the US consumer price index CPI figure of August scheduled for release at uh, 8. 1800 UTC on Tuesday prints about above 5% annualized that could speed up the federal reserves plan to begin scaling back its liquidity boosting asset purchases. Bitcoin's mid May slide from 58,000 to 30,000 happened after official data release on May 12th showed the U S CPI at a three year high and triggered taper fears. The sell off also co uh, coincided with China's crackdown on cryptocurrencies and concerns regarding the negative environmental impact of cryptocurrency mining the inflation remains the key, the key as usual, specifically when base effects will end, the CPI prints begin to reflect the, uh, the true year-on-year -year picture for the Fed, QCP Capital said on uh, its Telegram channel. Arguably, the worst of the base effects have now run its course, as seen in the chart below. If inflation still remains about 5% from here, the hawks will surely start expressing worry. Um, so, yeah, it's got some pointers on there on that chart there. Uh, on the US CPI worse the base effects took the worst of the base effects uh, look have to run their course. Several Fed members have already turned uh, hawkish signaling a willingness to begin th this taper this year. Some observers are concerned that possible that a possible taper could lead to a substantial drop in the dollar liquidity in the fourth quarter and could coincide with the US Treasury issuing more bonds to rebuild its offers, coffers, the Treasury, uh, the Treasury General Account or TGA after the debt ceiling is lifted. According to the Wall Street Journal, the US government could run out of cash and hit the debt ceiling between mid-October and mid-November. The Fed is expected to begin tapering around the same time. The US Treasury will likely uh, quickly rebuild the cash balance after its debt ceiling suspension as the new equilibrium level of the TGA seems to be around USD 800 billion. This is a, a net liquidity withdrawal of almost USD 600 billion compared to the current scenario, which cannot be seen as good news for risk appetite analysts of Nordia Bank said, Nordia Bank said in the weekly research uh, note published on Friday. So this is a chart. Uh, the US Treasury will draw a substantial amount of USD liquidity in late Q4. Bitcoin and other traditional market risk assets have soared in the past 18 months thanks to the liquidity deluge brought on by the Fed stimulus program. So liquidity squeeze due to a Fed taper in the U.S. Treasury actions could weigh on asset prices in general and especially on Bitcoin because capital in cryptocurrency markets is, merc is mercenary and tends to overreact according to the Masari's uh, 
to Masari's Mira Christia, Cristanto. Top investment bank uh, banks foresee market risk aversion strengthening in the weeks ahead, according to the Australian Finance Review. Morgan Stanley expects U.S. stocks to decline to decline as much as 15% by the end of the year, while Bank of America foresees a 6% drop. A stock market decline could add to bearish pressures around Bitcoin. This world still sees Bitcoin as a risk on asset. Charles Edwards, founder of uh, Capriol Investments, tweeted, almost every Bitcoin correction in 2021 has correlated with an S&P 500 correction of negative 2% or more. The S&P 500 fell by 1.69% last week alongside Bitcoin's 11% decline. So, uh, this is from CoinDesk uh, market team, Om- Omkar Godbol. And I'll, and I'll have this uh, article in the link. And um, Mustafa Merakalin, hi. Yeah, if you want to chat, go ahead and chat. You can chat in the uh, section if you have some questions about blockchain uh, technology, fintech or cryptocurrency. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't get financial news, but I'm reading the news to you. I'll be doing it every Monday, possibly every um, whenever I do it each day in the morning. So with that, let's go right on into the um, next piece of news here. And again, don't forget to subscribe, turn on bell notifications here on blockchain tech and finance news. And let's go. All right, so could have done that transition a little better, but we're trying, right? So this article we have right here, this is from um, Cointelegraph, Mary Huillet. Apologize for pronouncing your name incorrectly, but trying my best. The majority of Korea, uh, Korean crypto exchanges to shut down this month, insiders say. The failure to meet South Korean regulators' uh, new requirements is expedited to wipe out tens uh, tens of cryptocurrency exchange operators. I want to make sure I'm reading an article. Yep. Cheers. So the deadline for South Korea, Korean crypto exchanges to meet new compliance requirements is looming fast with all operators expected to submit requests for an official license with the financial services commission FSC, no later than September 24th industry actors and representatives for smaller exchanges have contested the new requirements for such for much of the past year, yet without success, now insiders reportedly expect that close that close to 40 of the country's estimated 60 cryptocurrency crypto operators to be forced to shut down. The crux of their op- objection has been op- the obligation that all exchanges show evidence that they are operating using real name ac- accounts as South Korean banks. The FSC has justified by arguing that there is a high demand from customers for more protection of their assets held at smaller cryptocurrency. Uh, platforms. Yet South Korea's banks have, for the most part, refused to engage in any risk man- uh, assessment process for ap- applicant exchanges, except for the country's top four trading platforms. These four exchanges, Upbit, BitHum, Corbit, and CoinOne, have already uh, already account for over 90% of South Korea's total traded volume. And experts have recently experts have in recent months made the case that the FSC's new framework is poised to further cement the country's crypto space as a monopolized market. Moreover, estimates by King Hyong Jong, I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly, you're trying, a professor had in the head of the Cryptocurrency Research Center of, at Korea University predict the mass exchange closure will eliminate t- uh, 42 kimchi coins, a moniker of small altcoins that are listed on smaller platforms and traded against the Korean won. Lee Chol Yi, head of local crypto exchange Fobelgate, has has told the Financial Times that a situation similar to bank to a bank run expected near the deadline as investors can't cash out of their holdings of altcoins listed on only on uh, only on small exchanges. They will find themselves suddenly poor. I wonder if regulators can handle the side effects. Uh, with all coins estimated to account for 90% of traded volume in South Korea's crypto markets, the FSC has reportedly advised those exchange operators who expect to shut down to notify their clients no later than September 17th. Cho Yeon Haeng, uh, president of Korea Finance Consumer Federation, has claimed that cons- uh, customer protection is unlikely to be the priority for those exchanges facing imminent closure and that 
Huge investor losses are therefore expected due to the freezing of assets and suspension of trading on smaller platforms. The regulatory heat will also affect international exchange operators. Binance has already preemptively halted Korean won trading pairs this summer to ensure it does not foul Korean authorities. The new measures have been designed to curb Koreans' enthusiasm for crypto trading amid concerns that retail investors, especially those from younger generations, are borrowing excessively in order to trade as they struggle with uh, suppressed wages, a frozen job market, and ever-rising real estate prices. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, those things kind of ring true in the, in the uh, latter aspect of things that, you know, possibility of uh, excessive borrowing or credit kind of utility uh, usage for buying crypto and trading crypto uh, like that. So uh, that's that article there. And again, if you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell, uh, bell notifications here to blockchain tech and finance news. All right, and let's go grab another article here with a little brief transition. All right, so can carbon capture technology save the planet? So this is uh, outside of uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. We're going into more technology, uh, finance, and fintech, and stock news. I got some other piece on DeFi, uh, decentralized finance. <clears throat> so this is from Tim O'Donnell, contributing writer from Yahoo News. Scientists are calling for drastic reductions in carbon in the atmosphere if we are to avoid the worst climate outcomes in the coming decades. Could carbon capture technology help? Here's everything you need to know. What role does carbon dioxide play in uh, climate change? Carbon dioxide is a heat trapping gas. It's essentially uh, it's released naturally in some cases through processes like volcanic eruption, but over the uh, last 170 plus years has rapidly increased in abundance thanks in large, in large part to human activity, particularly the burning of fossil fuels. NASA notes that atmospheric concentrates of carbon dioxide are 48% higher than the pre-industrial levels of 1850, a faster rise than the previous 20,000 year period. That in turn has led to, dangerous, uh, to a dangerous increase in global temperature. A dire United Nations climate report recently warned that a drastic reduction in carbon in the atmosphere would be necessary to keep global temperatures from rising more than two degrees Celsius by 2100 and setting off a cascade of climate catastrophes. Many experts argue that simply reducing emissions won't get us there, especially because certain industries like air travel will take years to fully decarbonize. Enter carbon capture, the act of removing carbon dioxide directly from the air. And how do you do that? There are multiple processes of capturing carbon, trees absorb carbon, and forests serve as natural carbon sinks. So reforestation efforts are part of the decarbonization plan, but mass tree planting isn't a cure-all once carbon is stored in biomass like trees and vegetation, it's unclear how long it will remain there before it escapes once more, especially because forests in the American West and Siberia have become increasingly vulnerable to forest fires, another fallout from climate change. This means carbon capture technology will likely have to play, have a role to play. And uh, for, for this, such as there are two main uh, tech-based car, uh, carbon capture methods. Carbon capture is the sequestrian CCS as a sequestrian CCS involves trapping the gas as it as its emission source, say a smokestack or a natural gas plant before it can be released into the atmosphere. The other method is indirect capture DAC, which aims to suck carbon dioxide from the air. Even if it was released a long time ago, both methods have the same goal, to isolate carbon, usually underground, where it can be either stored permanently or recycled and used in other processes such as concrete production. The advantage of DAC is that it can be deployed anywhere and requires less water and land usage than other CCS or natural strategies. It can be powered by renewable energies. How, uh, how common is direct air capture? The technology is definitely still in its uh, nascent stage, but is quickly gaining traction. There are already a few systems up and running in mainland Europe. On September 8th, a major new facility known as Orca, built by the Swiss company Climb, uh, Ch uh, Climbworks, which specialized in DAC technology, went online in Iceland. It's set to become the largest of its kind. Orca, mainly powered by, by waste heat, leftover heat from any process that uses energy, employs eight carbon collectors that reel in air via fans and then isolate 
the carbon using a highly selective filter uh, material. The carbon then gets heated, cooled, and pumped underground. Climework says that the system will soon remove up to 4,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide every year, and then and there reportedly isn't much reason to doubt its ability to meet this target. Soon, though, other projects, one in the southwestern United States and another in Scotland, which aims to re uh, remove about 1 million tons of carbon on net every year, may eclipse Orca in scale. So will removing that amount of carbon be enough to save the climate? Definitely not. Last month's UN report estimated that fa to facilitate the most optimistic scenario of limiting the rise in global average temperature uh, temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius, a whopping 17 billion tons of carbon dioxide would need to be removed annually. No one is expecting Orca or the other projects in development to carry that load on their own. So the hope among proponents of the technology is that new projects will Prove direct air capture can stand on its own as a viable commercial industry, paving the way for further facilities. What are the chances of that happening? Ask experts and you'll probably get a wide range of answers. Some believe DAC will remain a niche technology, but others think demand will grow. In the end, a lot will depend on cost. A few years ago, Climeworks executives told journalist John Gertner that the cost of capturing one ton of carbon was roughly between $500 to $600. A recent analyst of the industry found that it's possible the close range of for DAC could eventually get as low as $100 per ton. That may be a long way off. Many, many more plants will need to be built and engineers will likely have to continue to work to bring down production expenses by finding cheaper materials and improving assembly processes. But optimists point out other climate technologies, namely solar power, that were initially quite expensive, but eventually entered the mainstream and became not just affordable, but downright cheap. If Orca can lower the price of DAC, Gertner writes, it could serve as a promising indication that scaling up is uh, indeed feasible and convince major industries like airlines to invest in the technology to offset their emissions. What, go what about government investments? Governments are also prepared to invest, including the U.S. at the federal and state level. If Senate bipartisan infrastructure bill passes the House this month, as expected, then heads to President Biden's desk, it will allocate as much as $3.5 billion to help construct large DAC plants. And God willing, let's hope that happens, right? Has carbon uh, capture been successful so far? So far. <laughs> it's probably too early to tell for DAC, but CCS has experienced some significant failures. One notable example is a Chevron project that sought to bury carbon under an island off Western Australia. The goal was to capture and store 80% of its emissions from a natural gas site over the first five years, but it failed to do so. So our environmentalist, ja uh, our environmentalist jazzed about the technology. So not necessarily many think it will give the oil and gas industry an easy out without encouraging the much needed shifts away from fossil fuels back in July more than 500 environmental organizations in the U.S. and Canada signed an open letter expressing concerns about governmental support for carbon capture technology. Their fear is that if oil and gas companies can implement their own carbon capture systems to offset emissions, they'll use that as an excuse to keep uh, extracting fossil fuels, ultimately perpetrating, perpetuating the existing problem. Critics have argued that even some of, more, of the more well-known sorry, of the more well-intentioned efforts to build up carbon infrastructure really only serve to divert attention away from the fight against fossil fuels, which they feel could be the priority. So is that the census? Although there is a decent amount of opposition to the idea, many other environmentalists remain, environmentalists remain neutral or in favor of carbon capture technology. So long as it works in tandem with other efforts to eliminate greenhouse gas emissions, the concern about the fossil fuel industry the concerns about the fossil fuel industry are real. Suchi Taladi, the chief staff of the Devar uh, Department of Energy's Office of Fossil Fuel Energy, has clarified that avoiding emissions first is always the priority, but there is a growing realization that the carbon capture is ne necessary to meet cli to, to meeting climate goals to keep temperatures down. The reverse is also true. Companies like Clim Climeworks say they realize that their technology is not a silver bullet and that other mitigation efforts are needed. So if you have thoughts about this, again, I'll have these links in the description below on the recap videos on the YouTube side. But if let me know your uh, uh, comments on these articles and these topics and what you think on here as well. All right. So without that, we're going to go ahead and go right on into another article here. Again, if you're on your YouTube site, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications to blockchain tech and finance news. I'll be doing this every Monday, possibly um, throughout the week, multiple times a 
week. Um, so again, I have the chat up. Definitely chat with me. Let me know your questions or thoughts or inputs. And uh, let's go right on to our next article here. All right, so this article is from Sam Borgie. And this is uh, DeFi Land raises 4.5, uh, 4.1 million to launch decentralized finance game on Solana. And if you haven't heard about Solana, um, maybe we'll talk about a little about this here, but definitely look up Solana. It is an alternative and a solving aspect of the Ethereum blockchain and the high gas fees. So DeFi land raises 4.1 million to launch decentralized finance game on Solana. Decentralized financing. Uh, this article is from Sam Borgi uh, from Cointelegraph. So decentralized finance and gaming represents two of the biggest trends within the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. So you haven't seen uh, gaming emerging in like Axis Infinities, Xerox Universe, Xerox Spaceship, Light Knight on the Bitcoin Lightning Network, Satoshi Game Studios. Definitely look into those. We'll be going through, I'll be go reading about uh, gaming most definitely in blockchain space because it's uh, an emerging marketplace, especially with Bitcoin and uh, server, like Bitcoin based connected servers on the Lightning Network connected to CSGO, CSGO uh, Counter Strike Global Offense, and uh, Call of Duty Warzone, games like that. We compete against each other and it's all connected to the Bitcoin Lightning Network for Bitcoin Satoshi uh, cryptocurrency. So with this, blockchain gamification platform DeFi Land has secured $4.1 million in investments to launch a new decentralized finance game on Solana, further highlighting the growing ecosystem surrounding SOL, or Solana. The investment round had participation from over 40 investors, including some of the biggest names in blockchain venture capitalists, Animoca Brands, Alameda Research, Jump Capital, NGC Ventures, Solana Foundation, and Gate.io were among the major investors involved. DeFi Land operates as an agricultural simulation game designed to gamify all aspects of decentralized finance. The goal is to create an educational is to create educational solutions for users looking to explore DeFi or other alternative finance solutions. The platform introduces a play-to-earn model that allows users to earn income for completing tasks for reaching milestones. Brian Lee, a senior executive of Alameda Research, said DeFi land blends two of the most interesting things happening in crypto right now, gaming and DeFi. This increases the odd of casual gamers and crypto users entering the decentralized finance market for the first time. And that makes sense to me. Uh, yeah. So although DeFi land is primarily targeting resale, retail investors with exposure to cryptocurrency and gamers who have not yet entered the market, demand for DeFi protocols are quickly scaling to include major institutions and accredited investors. As Cointelegraph recently reported, large institutional investors denominated the decentralized finance market in the second quarter. New data from Chain, chain Analysis Chainalysis found that Large institutional transactions accounted for over 60% of DeFi transactions between April and June, compared to under 50% for all cryptocurrency transactions. When measured in terms of total value locked or TVL, the DeFi market is currently worth over $170 billion, according to industry data. So that's very interesting, uh, most definitely. So I'm going to look up uh, DeFi land, and quite possibly you'll be seeing me on my live stream and gaming sessions week to week, uh, whether whatever it is we're playing. Um, I'll check out DeFi land as a game and uh, um, we'll look at it. We'll look at it. I'll go through it on the next uh, blockchain tech and finance news episode, more about DeFi land, looking into it. And again, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't give financial advice, but I look at these interesting projects and we'll talk more about them. And maybe I'll even play DeFi land on live stream and get into it once it starts getting uh, going. So with that, let's close out this article here. And again, I'll have all of these articles in the description link in the box in the description box below on the recap on the YouTube side. So let's go. Uh, if you're on the YouTube side, I say that once more, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications. Let's go right on. We have one last article here. Let's go right into that. After this transition here, let's go. All right, so in this last 
article we have right here is from CNBC, right? It's from CNBC. Yeah, CNBC, the finance sector stocks making the biggest moves in the pre-market, Virgin Galactic, Dell Technologies, Alibaba, and more. Again, if you're on the chat, please do chat with me. Let me know what's up. Let me know your comments in the description on these videos and in the live stream chat. Stocks making the biggest moves in the pre-market, Virgin Galactic, Dell Technologies, Alibaba, and more. Futures point higher after Dow, S&P posts five straight days of losses. So, I mean, we could watch this video. I want to watch a video here. Let's go. Let's see what this when is. Realize your trading Skip the ad here. Center than trading special. We'll just mute that ad. Wall Street is pointed towards a higher open this morning. Stocks are coming off a negative week. The Dow and S&P 500 posting their worst weekly performance since June. Both are also on a five-day losing streak, the longest stretch for the S&P since February. Oil prices are rising to a one-week high on the continued impact of Hurricane Ida on supply. About 75% of offshore oil production in the Gulf of Mexico remains halted, but most of the refineries in Louisiana impacted by the storm have restarted operations. Markets in Europe and Asia are mostly higher, Hong Kong dropping about 1.5% on worries about further crackdowns by Chinese regulators on big tech companies. In focus for investors this week, reports on consumer prices, industrial production, retail sales, and consumer sentiment. With your CNBC Morning Business Report, I'm Silvana Hanau. That was just a little snippet on the video side, but let's read about this. Take a look at some of the biggest movers in the pre-market. Virgin Galactic, SPCE. Virgin Galactic is delaying uh, its first commercial research space mission after a third-party supplier warned of a potential defect in a component of the flight control system. Virgin Galactic shares slid 3.4% in the pre-market. Uh, I'm sure that will repair. Uh, accordingly, Dell Technologies, Dell so again, because others, again, this is not financial advice or anything, but uh, a 3.4% uh, slide down. Other people find that as an opportunity to buy while there's uh, who already have it is an opportunity to stay holding. Dell Technologies, Dell. Dell added 2.1% in pre-market action after Goldman Sachs added the computer maker's stock to its conviction buy list. Dell, uh, Goldman cited strong cash flow generation and debt pay down plans, among other factors. So for TransUnion, TRU, TransUnion announced a deal to buy closely held information, information services company Newstar for $3.1 billion in cash. The credit reporting agency expects the deal to close during the fourth quarter. Viacom, VIAC, Viacom is planning to revamp its Paramount Pictures unit, according to the, according to the people familiar with the matter who spoke to the Wall Street Journal, the revamp, which could separate TV and film operations, could be announced as soon as today. Viacom rose 1% in the pre-market. Kansas City Southern, KSU. Kansas City Southern said its latest takeover bid from Canadian Pacific Railway. CP is a superior, superior to the one it previously agreed to with Canadian National Railway, CNI. Canadian National now has five days to improve its offer, should it choose to do so. Canadian Pacific rallies 2.1% in pre-market trading. While Disney DIS, Disney will show the remainder of its 2021 movie releases exclusively in theaters rather than making them simultaneously available on its Disney Plus streaming services. Disney's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings topped the weekend box office once again following its record Labor Day weekend performance with that movie show, uh, showing exclusively in theaters. So for Alibaba, there's a lot going on with Alibaba, but... In this regards, uh, just to touch upon it, and the BABA stock, Alibaba fell 1.6% in pre-market action, uh, pre action following a Financial Times report that the Chinese government wants to break up Alipay, the digital payments company owned by Jack Ma's Ant Group. Alibaba has a one-third stake in the Ant Group. Also, Ant Group is uh, launching the uh, Ant blockchain as well, from my understanding. Apple, this is another big piece. Uh, AAPL, Epic Games will appeal Friday's ruling that Apple's App Store was not in, in, was not an illegal monopoly Epic did win a partial victory in the case with the judge ruling that Apple must allow developers to include external payment links. So that's cool. I agree with that. That's that's pretty cool. Carlisle, so I mean, that's nice, um, especially, you know, for us app developers out there who want to uh, app on the Apple store, we can have uh, included external payment links. Carlisle, I'll have to read more into what exactly that means. But anyways, Carlisle Group, CG. Carlisle is in considering is considering six billion dollars in sale. A, a, sorry, considering a six billion dollar sale 
or initial public offering for packaging company Novolex, according to a Bloomberg report. The private equity firm bought Novolex for an undisclosed amount in November 2016. MGM reports, MGM resorts, MGM rose 1.7% in the pre-market after Bernstein upgraded the resort operator's stock to outperform from net mar- from market perform, citing a strong presence in the gaming and sports betting industry, as well as moves to divest the company's real estate portfolio. So I wonder what MGM Resorts and MGM will be doing within the gaming industry. I'll have to look that up. Pfizer, PFE, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine developed in conjunction with German partner BioNTech BNTX could be authorized for use in children age 5 to 11 as soon as next month. According to news, two sources familiar with the situation's who spoke to Reuters. Pfizer is expected to have enough data by then to submit an application for emergency use authorization to the Food and Drug Administration. BioNTech added 1.7 in pre-market trading. So that's this. We got a CNBC article here about stocks making the biggest moves in the pre-market Virgin Galactic, Dell Technologies, Alibaba, and more. All right. So that's all I've got for the news today. I think maybe I'll be doing this. Maybe I'll do this every morning. We'll see how it goes. Um, but in any regards, if you're on the YouTube side, please do subscribe, turn on the bell notifications to blockchain tech and finance news right here. And again, I will see you all back maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, but maybe most definitely not maybe but most definitely every Monday in the morning, blockchain tech and finance news. And again, you'll find these, uh, episode recaps on the YouTube side, youtube.com forward slash Kintoshi. Once more, please do subscribe, turn on bell notifications. And I'll see you all back. Cheers. Ciao. Stay well. Stay safe.